I'm Michael Wildenstein, Farrier and Farrier Educator, and I'm here to talk to you about Diamond Tools from Diamond Farrier Company. This is one of many different types of Farrier toolboxes that are very handy because they're on wheels so I can move around the horse. So I have, if I have a level location, I can use that to wheel my tools around as I'm working on the horse. There's handy places for tools such as my clinch cutter and my clinchers. I'll put the saddle horse clincher in there for the work I'm going to do today. The rounding hammer of choice for me would be the two pound hammer. The horseshoe tongs. the Pritchell, I'll use the 10 ounce hammer, that's sufficient for the nails that I'll be driving. I use a right and a left handed knife and quite often when I'm working at the sole I'll use a wide bladed knife. The 12 inch nippers will be sufficient for what I'm doing today. Crease nail puller. Nail nippers. The clinch block. and the shoe puller. I'm using a blacksmith's buddy which is a training tool in learning how to trim a horse's foot or holding it in the appropriate position. And not only learning how to trim a horse's foot but also learning how to use the tools. The areas of the hoof wall, the hoof, this is the wall, this is the sole, this is the frog, this would be called the collateral sulcus and the central sulcus. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut off excess length, the flaky material that's exfoliating on its own. We'll remove some of that. I'll put the knife in my hand, palm up, thumb on the end, and using my thumb as a driver, I'll go around and trim off the sole. Until it becomes slightly glossy. And so I'm going in a circular motion around the sole of the foot, removing excess sole sole that is flaky and once I've achieved that smoothed it up inspected the bottom of the hoof for any defects and I want to trim on the frog I'll use the narrow hoof knife and cutting from the toe up trim the side of the frog and I'll use a left-handed knife when I trim the other side of the frog and I'll clean out the central sulcus in the middle of the foot. The hand, palm up, knife goes in the hand, thumb at the end of the handle using my other thumb I'm going to use that to push the knife and the angle in which I tip that knife will define the depth. I recommend just taking small bites and lots of them. Be conservative and will smooth up the sole 
of the horse's foot removing excess material. Once I have that excess material removed, I'll use the hoof nippers. And for me, it works best to start on one heel, squeeze the reins, move the nippers slightly, bite again. I'm only taking about half a nipper width. I'm squeezing the nippers reins together, taking a bite, just giving the nipper reins a small wiggle, biting again, staying in the same trail as I had been, not using the full width of the nippers, but only part of it. Stay in the trail and walk around trimming the excess hoof wall. Once I have achieved trimming off the excess length of hoof wall with the nippers, then I'll use the horseshoe rasp and I'll use the core side of the rasp and I'll go away from the handle and I'll make a circular motion around that foot to flatten it up. Make it flat, take out the rough marks from the nippers and make it as level as possible. I'll turn my rasp around so that I'm still able to go away from the handle and file the other side of the foot. Circular motions and I'll stop occasionally tip the foot down and see how flat I'm getting that, that wall. Once I've gotten the rough work done, I'll flip the file over using the smooth side, finish that up, make any small adjustments that I need to make, and then I'll tip the file up and take the sharp edge off with the smooth side of the file. Once we've achieved this trim, then we can select a shoe type and begin shaping that shoe to the hoof. I'm just gonna go back again with the hoof knife, make sure I have no sole at the same level as the wall. When applying a shoe, we don't want pressure on that sole as it could compromise circulation.